Welcome to Sweeping Lens. I'm Tim Magic Seven Husen of Oracle'sElixir.com, and today we're going to talk about KDA ratio, why it's a bad stat, and why we use it anyways. So first, we're going to look at what is KDA ratio, uh, what are the numbers that go into it. Then we'll talk about why KDA is a good stat, why we actually use it. Uh, we'll talk about why KDA is a bad stat, all the problems inherent in it, and then finally, whether there's an alternative that we might be able to look at instead. So first things first. What is KDA ratio? Well, it's when you take uh, a player's performance over a single game or a series of games, you add up all of their kills and assists, and you divide by their deaths. It's really simple. It's logical why we would use those numbers to measure you know, how well they performed in combat, and it's very familiar. We've talked about it for years. Uh, we've talked about it before League of Legends existed in other games such as Dota, and it's very familiar to us uh, in, in looking at even our own performance in a single solo queue game and kind of to judge how well that I do in, in this game. KDA is distributed along uh, this, this curve here. This is based on 400 players uh, from the 2015 competitive data that I've collected from the NA and EU LCS, from the LCK, LMS, promotional tournaments, and so on, uh, that covers most of 2015. Uh, I took the KDA, the final KDA for each player over the course of the whole year, and then plotted it like this. So you can see in this distribution that it's it's based roughly around this kind of 3.0 midpoint. Uh, most people fall between a 2.0 and a 4.0 KDA at the end of the year, but it's very skewed to the right. So we've got this group of players who has kind of a 4.4 to 4.5 or higher, uh, and then it really drops off a lot, a lot around 5.5 with a few people kind of trickling off towards the end here with really strong KDA ratios. But what we can see from this distribution, if basically you have between a 2.0 and a 4.0 KDA, you're part of you know most of the pack. Uh, the more games you play, you're kind of sucked in more towards the middle here. And the reasons for that we'll get into in just a moment. So what makes KDA a good stat? Why do we use it? Well, aside from it being very familiar and kind of being a, a logical, natural way to approach things, it's good because it's relatively easy to interpret. We know what KDA represents. We have a pretty good rough idea of what a good KDA is, what a bad KDA is. We know what it's measuring, you know, specifically what they did in combat. And it's good because it measures the outcome of the game, not the process of how a player plays. So for comparison, we can look at another popular familiar stat, kill participation which measures the uh, the number of a team's kills that the specific player was part of. Kill participation, which I've done a video on it before, that's a stat that measures process, mostly. If you have a very high kill participation, it means that that's the way your team played, that's the way you played, you were involved in the team's action. Uh, in, in solo queue, it's a little different, you know, you were making the action happen more often because it's not as coordinated, but in, in competitive play, High kill participation means you were well involved in the team's action because the team intended you to be involved most of the time. Whereas a low kill participation, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It might be because the team intended you to be off split pushing while the rest of the team picked a fight somewhere else. So kill participation is measuring how the team and how the player plays the game, not so much, you know, how well the team or the player did. High and low are not necessarily good, not necessarily bad. KDA is also good because it allows us to make relatively straightforward comparisons between players. We can say that the player with the higher KDA had a better performance in combat. That's almost always true. Even if there's nuance to, you know, why this player's KDA is high, maybe the this player had a lot of assists and uh, not that many deaths, or that, that player had a lot of deaths and a lot of assists, and how did it quite balance out? But aside from all those kind of little nuances, we can generally say higher KDA, better combat performance, and that's good. On the negative side, KDA is a bad stat because it values every kill and assist the same. We can't necessarily be sure, you know, that a solo kill is worth the same as an assist on a team fight kill where all five team members were involved and, you know, how much did you actually contribute? Were you just throwing a shield on somebody who did the final damage or were you actually, you know, doing 60% of the damage to that person and and finalize the kill or did you provide the the important crowd control that allowed the team to pick the kill up? We aren't sure, you know, that every kill and assist should be worth the same. So KDA ratio might be kind of 
undervaluing some things, overvaluing other things. KDA is also bad because uh, deaths have a lot more weight than kills or assists do. This is why that, that distribution was drawn into the center point, the 3.0, and was kind of skewed out to the right there. Because when you have a high KDA, every death is going to shrink your KDA quite a bit. Whereas if you have a smaller KDA, you know, even so, say you've got a 2.0 KDA, which is not very good. You still have to get two kills or assists for every death you get just to maintain that. You've got to make multiple positive plays for every death. So, uh, say you've got, you know, a, a KDA of, of 8 or 10, something ridiculous. You have to make 8 or 10 positive plays just to maintain that high KDA. So you're, you're naturally, you know, one bad game is going to drop you quite a bit. One good game is not necessarily going to push you up at all or very much. Another bad part is that uh, comparisons between players are not linear. We can't say that a 6.0 KDA is twice as good as, the, as a 3.0 KDA, even though we might be tempted to kind of kind of naturally, in the way our brains work, make that comparison. A 6 KDA is much rarer than a 3. A 3 is an av kind of the average point, and then a 6 is actually quite rare. So to go from a 3 to a 4 is, you know, kind of going from average to decent. Going from a 5 to a 6 is going from very good to great. And you know, the, the actual, how quantifiable is each jump in, in ranges of KDAs, well, that's that's really hard to say. So the, the comparisons are not as straightforward as we might like them to be. And then finally, a single game KDA ratio is really not comparable with a many game KDA. The distribution we are looking at, again, is based on uh, only players who played at least five games over the course of 2015. When you look at players who only play one, two, three games and, and look at their KDAs, you see much more... Uh, wide distribution you're going to find those 10 kdas or 20 kdas uh, or you know look at the world championships 2015 and you've got some players in sk telecom who had really super high kda ratios just because the team was playing so well and then finally at the end you know they get a few deaths and it drops all the way back down to something more reasonable so comparing your own single game solo queue kda to what a pro player has done over 20 or 30 games it really doesn't tell the same story whether there's an alternative, well, there is one that's out there that I find very interesting. This is something that uh, Riot Spelzy pointed me towards, something that he tracks on his own and, and finds interesting. Uh, so it's it's based on the idea of kill shares. This is something developed by Jesse Albert, uh, published in an article on OnGamers. Check the description of the video for a link to that article. And it the concept is that every kill uh, divides its value evenly among the people who contributed. So a kill is worth one point, sort of, uh, and if three people were involved, so one kill, two assists, each of those people gets 0.33 kill shares. Or if four people were, were in, or five people were involved, one kill, four assists, everybody gets 0.2 kill shares. So what this allows us to do when you take the kill shares and uh, divide it by deaths, so to get a KSD ratio, uh, it makes things more or less centered around one, so that makes the, uh, rather than being centered kind of roughly centered around three, uh, it's a little more logical. So we've got this kind of point here where it's kind of centered around the one mark. That makes it a little bit easier to interpret, makes the comparisons a little more straightforward in some ways. It also allows us to to not make every kill and assist worth the same amount and, and, and treat them as if they, they had the same value to the game. Uh, the cons are that it is, this is unfamiliar, we're used to KDA, we're not used to kill shared to death ratio. Uh, it's harder to track, you can't look at the end game stats and grab it uh, and calculate this number. You have to have followed who is involved in each kill over the course of the game or get access to that data after the fact. So you can't just mentally in your solo queue, solo queue game look back at the end of the game and say, okay, what was my KSD ratio? Like you can with a KDA ratio. Uh, there's also the the problem that it's still the distribution is still more or less the same. We're still skewed to the right. It's just that the actual numbers have changed, um, and you know the the shape of the curve is a little bit different. But it's still got the same inherent core problem where deaths are, you know, they're they're not as much the most important thing anymore, but they are still the most important. They're still going to affect your ratio more than you know. You still have to make multiple positive plays to to change uh, or to improve your your ratio. There's Finally, the, the kind of the problem of we are layering our own uh, values or interpretation into this number from the very outset. We are claiming that we are confident that, er, that a solo kill is worth more than a team fight assist, for example. 
that's not necessarily always the case. In some cases, the team fight plays may be worth, you know, a lot more. Um, one assist in, in a team fight may have been worth just as much as a solo kill off from the top lane. But this number and this approach is valuing that solo kill a lot more than the one assist in that team fight. Even if it was, you know, a five on five fight, one person dies, but that kill, you know, allows a five on four that pushes down an inhibitor or something like that. That kill has, you know, given a 0 0.2 death share to all five of those people, but, you know, maybe it was actually a bigger play than the solo kill was. So we've, we've taken this nuance and we've kind of hidden it with this number and, and, and we're acting like that nuance doesn't exist. Whereas with KDA ratio, we know it's a simple number. We understand intuitively right off the bat. We haven't monkeyed with these numbers at all. Uh, there is all this context around it and we, you know, we don't kind of assume that that context has been taken care of as, in some way. And we haven't made any intentional choices about that context and, and what's more valuable and what's less valuable. So in some ways, the simplicity there is, the, the simplicity in KDA might be worth more than the problems that KSD might fix while introducing other problems that we have a harder time recognizing. So the takeaways are that KDA is a nice, simple, familiar stat. It enables us to compare between players in a way that doesn't lead to too much bias or too many problems. You know, it, it, it's not a really problematic stat. It's just not really completely ideal, maybe. But like any stat, KDA has some inherent biases, uh, and it doesn't tell the whole story. We're still only talking about the combat portion of the game. We aren't talking about the, the lane pushing or the tower killing or the, the objectives or anything like that. So it, we're not getting a complete picture of, of a player's performance in one number, like we might kind of hope sometimes KDA is telling us. But at the end of the day, there's there's no real clear alternative at this point. Uh, kill share to death ratio is interesting. It provides a different angle, a bit of a different lens, but it's not really solving the core problems of KDA ratio. It's still got some of the same inherent biases. It's still got some of the same inherent kind of dis distribution problems, and it adds some complexities while solving some problems along the way. So it's not really a perfect solution by any means. Maybe in the future, as we continue to think and theorize about this, build some other player rating stats, we might come up with another alternative. But at this point, KDA is probably the best we have as long as we recognize its limitations. For more discussion of League of Legends stats theory and the most in-depth collection of LOL esports stats for players, teams, and champions, visit oracleselixir.com. I'm Tim Magic7Husen, and this has been Sweeping Lens.